couple weeks ago, I put up a cover video of me playing the solo to Here I Go Again by White Snake, and I got a bunch of requests from you guys to do a video on how to play it. So today we're going to learn the whole thing, including that mystery run at the end you've never been able to figure out. Hello there everybody and welcome to this week's installment of Weekend Wayne Shop. Here with your good buddy, Uncle Ben. I love the smell of hairspray in the morning, in the afternoons, in the evenings, and really pretty much any time. The guitar solo to Here I Go Again by Whitesnake is one of my favorites from the hair metal era. It's really melodic, it follows the chord changes well, and it's got some blistering, really ripping stuff towards the end of it. It's a great one to add to your arsenal of classic shred solos. But before we get into it, let's hear it again at stepdad speed. And don't forget to snag that full tab over on my Instagram page and upload a video of yourself playing through it along with hashtag Weekend Wink Shop. Okay, solo is in the neighborhood of G and it starts off with a couple of simple licks. First lick sounds like this. What I'm doing here is I start off on the 4th fret G, 5th fret G, 7th fret G, then what I'm going to do is to play the 5th D sliding to 7. Here's the next lick in there. I'm playing the 8th fret B string, bending it up a whole step, coming back down and playing it natural. So notice you didn't hear the bend go up and down like this, like that. You just heard it come up, and then it's back down without a sound. So you got to kind of, you know, mute it over here while the bend is coming down. So anyway, you got an 8 with the bend, an 8 natural, 7th fret B, back to 8th fret B. And after this, you're going to play the 5th fret G string two times. So that was... That one sits over the beat really loosely, you know, so it's not a super metric kind of feeling phrase. So listen closely, especially on the two C notes there at the end. This next lick also sits real loose over the beat. I'm starting off by playing 7th G sliding to 9 with my 3rd finger. First finger here plays the 7th fret B, 8th fret B, 10th fret B. So now you got... After that, play the 10 on the B again, sliding to 12. So now you have... Next you're gonna do... So I'm hitting the 12th fret B again, pulling off to 10, then pulling off to 8. Then play the 10th B again. So L phrases. Again, the timing there is really fluid. Next phrase follows a D arpeggio. What we're going to do here is to play the 10th fret low E string, 12th fret A, 12th fret D. Then you're going to play uh, 11 here on the G. So now you got... I just think this looks like a D major bar chord. That's definitely kind of where he got the idea for the phrasing right there. So you got... Notice that last note I played with my first finger. That's to allow me to reach the 14th fret G which is the next note. So my fingering there is one, three, three, one, four. After this, you're going to use your middle finger to grab the 12th fret G string here and bend it up a whole step, let it down, and then pick it two times and give it some wide ass shake. Next part right here is simple. He's grabbing the 17th fret on the high E string here with a whole step bend and some juicy vibrats. 
the next one he does is the same bend again but with no vibrato and let it down. So you got one with a vibrato and one that's just up down. That's a little tiny detail to notice, but it's there. After that, you're gonna play the high E string here, 15 and 17, and then play the 15th fret B. So that phrase is. And then we get on to the mystery run. I've seen a million tabs to this that are all different and they're all slightly incorrect. I actually even have a really old video of me playing this on my YouTube channel and I even used to play it wrong too. Uh, I put the audio into Logic uh, on my Mac there and I slowed it down using that very speed function they have on there. Slowed it down and just listened to it over and over and over and over and over and again and discovered a few things about it that I think we've all been missing for years. Check this out. <laughs> Weird, huh? I'm gonna show you how to play the run and then play it through at several different speeds along with the audio slowed down so that way you can hear it firsthand. I guess most people would equate this to sort of a four note per string C Lydian kind of scale shape. First part starts off on the E string, it's gonna go like this. So what I'm playing here is 8, 10, 12. And then what I'm doing is shifting up with my first finger and playing the same pattern up a step. So it's 10, 12, 14. So you've played. I'm using fingering one, two, four for both of those. After that, what you're gonna do is like that. So on the A string here, I'm playing 10, 12, and 14. So same thing you just played on the E. And then what you're going to do is with your first finger, shift up to 12, and he's gonna play 12, 14, 15. Now, here's the timing. You have there's a little pause on the A note right there. Again, that's one of those little things that every tab I've seen misses, but it's totally there. So after that last phrase of 12, 14, and 15 on the A, you're gonna round that off on the D string here by playing 12, 14, and 16. A lot of these whole step shapes in here. So now we should have, play that again. The rest of this here is somewhat more straightforward. You're gonna go up the D string here on 14, 16, and 17. Same thing on the G, 14, 16, 17. And then you're gonna round that off by playing the 15th B. So this run will sound like. After that is where we kind of cut down the time a little bit here. We're gonna play 17th B, 19th B. And again, that's where the phrasing starts to slow down. And then lastly, what you're gonna do is grab the 19th fret high E string and give it a half step bend and some big old vibrato. That way you're ending on the C note, which is the minor third of the A minor that the rhythm guitar is on right there. Note targeting, kids. It's important. Here's the whole run again, this time played with the metronome set at 65 BPM, and then we'll start breaking it down with actual audio. Two, three, four. That one little teeny tiny pause that happens on the A note on the 12th fret A string is what makes this really hard to nail super accurately. Cause you gotta think at the tempo of the song, that rest which lasts like, you know, a 16th note or whatever, it's here and gone in like a nanosecond. And honestly, I mean, honest to God, probably if you just played all the notes in this run about as fast as you can, it'll probably end up sounding okay. But it's always important to try to achieve exactly what's going on on the record with this stuff. So let me play it for you again at several different speeds. What I've done is I've made a little loop of just that run. I've, I've left off the last epic bend at the end. I'm gonna leave that off. That way I can just play through the run and then play through it again, then play through it again, and you can play along with it. We'll start off super slow and work our way up. Yeah, 
Here's a little faster. A lot faster. And really fast. And because I've been on this big pick slanting kick with you guys lately, I'll also talk a little bit about the slants involved in this lick. It's pretty much all downward pick slanting because 99% um, of the string changes happen after upstrokes. After an upstroke, I change strings. There's a change after an upstroke. There's a change after an upstroke. The only one that happens with a string change on a downstroke is that one, the one on the G string, where you just play A, B, C. That's the only one that happens with a string change after a downstroke. So that one needs to be upward pick slant if you're going at hyper speed. Right there. But you can even avoid that by moving the D note from right there right there if you wanted to, then you could change after an upstroke there too. Huh, I hadn't thought about that before. Whew, take your time with that one kids. If you're having a hard time keeping up with playing along with that on the recording, I recommend uh, dumping the original MP3 into your DAW of choice. Like I said, I use Logic, you can use GarageBand or whatever. Most all of that software has something on there where you can slow down the audio and still preserve the pitch. Also, for anybody wanting to get better at um, playing fast licks like this, there's an app you can get called the Amazing Slow Downer. I can't recommend that thing enough. It's amazing. You can get it on your phone or your tablet or your computer or whatever, and it slows down audio and preserves pitch and preserves kind of the integrity of your recording better than pretty much anything I've ever seen. It's a must-have, so be sure to get the Amazing Slow Downer for stuff like this. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to like my channel and subscribe. Also, be sure to go visit my new Facebook fan page at facebook.com slash UncleBenEller and give that a like. You guys can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at BenEllerGuitars. And if you're interested in booking some one-on-one -on -one Skype lessons with me, be sure to drop me a line, BenEllerGuitars at gmail.com. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks again and stay tuned for another hot lick next week. Cheers.